For two decades as a baseball star on the New York spotlight, Derek Jeter cultivated a flawless image, somehow avoiding even a hint of scandal or controversy. But now, just a few months into his new job as CEO of the Miami Marlins, he's suddenly taking fire from all directions. Oh, say. It's opening day at the Marlins ballpark in Miami. Fans are celebrating the start of a new season, one in which the team's biggest star isn't in uniform. Shout out to Derek Cheetah, legendary. Like any opening day, it's an opportunity for new beginnings. But for Derek Jeter, the team's new CEO, the beginning of his second career has been a bumpy one. Are you as happy as you look? I am. Yeah, no, things are going well. It's, it's, uh, it's a good time in my life. <laughs> yeah, why do you laugh? Because, I mean, if, from what I read, things aren't, aren't going great. How so? Well, you've been blamed for everything from firing people who were beloved to blowing off the winter meetings to tanking, fronting an ownership group needs money. Um, where do you want me to start? You tell me. You named a lot quickly. I okay. My memory's starting to go. Um, where do you want to start? When Jeter and a handful of wealthy partners bought the struggling Marlins franchise last October, the locals thought that their savior had finally arrived. Fans hoped that Jeter, the ultimate winner, would come to their rescue after a string of previous owners had betrayed them time and again. There's a complicated history with the fan base here. They have a long history. Oh, yeah. A I bad you, history. It's complicated. It's an organization, won a championship, dismantled the team. Won a second one, dismantled the team. Build a stadium, dismantled the team. So Floridians were stunned when Jeter took control of the team and began dismantling it yet again. He purged seemingly everyone from popular team ambassadors and front office personnel to broadcasters and even the team's mascot. Then he traded away virtually all of the Marlins' best players, saving tens of millions of dollars in payroll for himself and his fellow owners. Derek Jeter is ruining the Marlins. <laughs> He's going to strip this sucker down until it is completely barren. How did you expect people here to react to the sell-off of their favorite players? Uh, I expected exactly their reaction. Right? But listen, this is an organization that has not been in the postseason in 14 years. And if you don't win, you have to make changes. Jeter even irked the baseball world. When in the wake of his controversial trade of league MVP Giancarlo Stanton, he skipped the league's annual convention of front office personnel, the winter meetings, sending another Marlins executive in his stead. If you're going to have that title and you're going to run baseball operations and you make a big move like this, you need to be there in person. Buster, you've covered this sport for a long time. You ever remember something like this happening? No. For anyone wondering just where Jeter was, the answer came later that night when he showed up on television screens at a Miami Dolphins football game. You don't sense that that was bad optics? No, because I have a job to do. My job but is just Derek, not Derek, my job. Derek, my... you are, or were, in the process of getting rid of the best players on this team, and isn't it your job as the face of the franchise to be at those winter meetings and explain what's going on. Isn't that your responsibility? No, not necessarily. There's more to a football game. It wasn't just going to watch a football game. There were meetings that were taking place at a football game. So you don't think the optics of that were bad? <laughs> um, well, yeah, obviously we're sitting here talking about it. So yeah, the optics are bad, right? We wouldn't be talking about it if you said the optics weren't bad. For most people, criticism is a part of every job. But for Derek Jeter, the iconic face of Major League Baseball for two decades, who could seemingly do no wrong as a player. History with an exclamation point! This isn't the way it was supposed to be. Derek Jeter won't acknowledge the fact that he played this wrong from the beginning. How's the CEO doing here? I think he's doing well. Dr. Charles Jeter might be more forgiving than most. He's Derek's father. It's not easy. Yeah, you know, nobody says it's going to be easy. This is a different kind of criticism mm -hmm. than he's ever experienced in his career. Yeah, he's a rookie. Some things are not going to go well. You know, you try some things, and there's going to be some criticism that comes with it. He has always right. expected a lot of himself as a player. Mm -hmm. Do you think his expectations have changed much as an owner? Not at all. Not at all. But Derek, I know from talking with him, he wants to be just as good as an owner. 
The move from shortstop to the front office isn't the only major change in Derek Jeter's life. The once famous bachelor known for dating a seemingly endless stream of glamorous women is now married to model Hannah Davis. Their family home is a 30,000 square foot palace on Florida's west coast, which the locals have dubbed St. Jetersburg. And last August, they welcomed their first child, a daughter named Bella. You come home and regardless of what happens at work, um, she smiles and she's happy to see me. So that's the best part. It's not an ideal arrangement in that your home is in Tampa, your job is in Miami. My home is here now. I don't know if my wife signed up for that, but uh, you have to be here. You have to be present. You, know, you have to be present in the community. And, um, and I'm here. I'm in Miami. On opening day, Jeter and his wife arrived at Marlins Park, where his pregame duties have changed from his playing days. Now he's obligated to attend VIP events and to schmooze advertisers and ticket holders. A once reluctant salesman, now forced to perfect his pitch. Give me an idea what you've been doing. Speaking to Chamber of Commerce, speaking to potential corporate partners, speaking to season ticket holders, speaking to our entire fan base. Um, there's been a lot of meetings um, telling our story. You know what I'm gonna say? This is an exciting day for us as an organization. This is opening day, and we have a fun-filled day planned. As if his transformation from player to CEO weren't obvious enough, the newly minted salesman made it personally clear. Buy season tickets. Um, it, uh, support the team. It, Actually, we're going to bring somebody up here right after this interview. What, to get your tickets? To get my tickets? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you get a suite, you entertain a lot. When the game started, the contrast from Jeter's past life continued. Yankee Stadium, this was not. Fans of the visiting Chicago Cubs appeared to outnumber those of the Marlins. And a number of seats sat empty. The Marlins' opening day lineup was young and inexperienced because, Jeter says, he wants to build a team from the ground up, developing minor leaguers and hoping they blossom into stars like he did. There's a time when you take the field when people don't know your name, right? That happens in sports. They don't know who you are when you first come up. But Derek, you know. But they, they get to know you. Go back in time, <laughs> right? Go back in time. You know, we the the Yankees went to, and I don't want to get into going back and talking about my my career. But there was a great career, wasn't period it? there when when the Yankees were not winning. Going back, Larich, don't fall. Whoa, oh, he dropped the ball. And that changed because you had players. See, you had we, proven we, players. But see, but but hold on, hold on. But we weren't all proven when we first came up, Bryant. Now were we? I was a part of the group that came through the minor league system and helped us have success. So it's this blueprint for success. Look at the Cubs, look at Houston Astros, look at Cleveland, this blueprint for success. is not something I'm just making up. Stripped of their best players from last season, the Marlins lost their opener eight to four. Some suspect that's exactly the point. That Jeter's plan is for the Marlins to lose so often that they'll gain the highest picks in the next amateur draft. It's a strategy known as tanking, and it asks teams and their fans to forsake winning in the short term in hopes of improving their long-term prospects. And that's 20 runs for the Phils on this Saturday night. If you were tanking, would you tell me? Tanking, what is, no, you, tanking. Tanking is intentionally, not intentionally, not trying. I know what the definition of tanking is. Tanking is, is not trying your hardest to win ball games every day. We're trying to win ball games every day. But you're, a, you're enough of a baseball man to know that if you, if you trade your best players in exchange for prospects, um, it's unlikely you're going to win more games in the immediate future. When you take the field, you have an opportunity to win each and every day. Each and every day. That mindset should be with you every single time you take the field. You never tell your team that they're expected to lose. Never. Not now, so you can think. Now, now, I can't tell you how you think. Like, I see your well, mind. I see That's how you think. I don't think like that. That's your mind No, I get like that, that, but I, I guess not in so many but words. You don't, but you don't get it. I do. You don't. We have two different minds. I can't wait to get you on the golf course, man. We got, I, I mean, I can't wait for this one. No, I mean. You're mentally yeah, weak. But you don't, you, you really 
expect this team I expect as this team to compete, to compete to compete to uh, compete compete is one Every thing Every sing- compete listen, is one listen, thing right, see, watch my lips not to compete I, I see your I, I I see your lips I see I've been seeing them this whole interview <laughs> I see your lips moving constantly <laughs> but when you have the mindset of a player this is the mindset you should have Every single day. Every single day you compete. You never tell your players that you are expected to lose. You don't do that. You should take that as a slap in the face. As a player, you should take that as a slap in the face. Do you expect them to contend? I do. I do. You expect them to. Yes. If I don't believe with the, in the players that we have on the field, who's going to believe in them? But as an executive, it looks like you're delusional if you believe otherwise. Well, call me delusional. What Jeter can't ignore, however, is that Miami's long-suffering fans are at their wits' end. The ballpark that Jeter's group inherited, a stadium with a retractable roof, an aquarium behind home plate, and a gaudy home run structure, was bought and paid for largely by the citizens of Miami, who now feel they were betrayed. It's a nearly $2 billion bill that taxpayers are still paying off, and the reason why the city has filed a lawsuit asking both the previous owners and Jeter's ownership group for 5% of the revenue generated from the Marlins' sale. We didn't make money from the sale. We're the one that paid the money, right? I mean, it's pretty simple if you think about it. Tell that to the courtroom. They will, right? To Jeter's credit, he did host a town hall meeting where he took the heat and answered questions from aggrieved season ticket holders. Video cameras were not allowed inside, but a fan later described the scene to local radio. People were crying, they were screaming. One guy said, I'll probably die before the Marlins are a winner. Derek, you're asking for patience from a fan base that, as you noted yourself, um, hasn't seen playoff baseball in a long time. Yeah. They want to know when they might see it. Is that not a fair question? It is a fair question. So when might they see it? I don't know. You take it one game at a time. So I'm trying to say you can't take it one. I wish I was a fortune teller, right? I wish I could tell the future. You take it one game at a time. That's all you can do. Oddly enough, what seems to have been lost in the shuffle is that Derek Jeter has already accomplished something of note, becoming the first black CEO of a major league baseball team. Thinking back to years ago, you know, in the South, being born in the South, man, I tell you, it's it's, uh, an almost an out-of-body experience. You are the first black CEO in Major League Baseball history. What's that mean to you? It means a lot. I mean, it it means a lot. I'm well-versed in the history of this game. And, uh, you know, I understand that diversity, especially in the front office, has been an issue with this game. I think there's been some progress, but not quite as much as there should be. I'm gonna get your mind right, watch Today, despite the mountains of criticism, Jeter remains positive. He says he never looks back at his old life, back when he starred on the field, and rarely heard a discouraging word. You don't miss it? Playing? No. Not for a second? Not one second. When's the last time you touched the bat? Touched one or swung one? Swung one. Last game I played. You've not swung a bat? Nope. Nope. Last time, last game. No words, just to see. Oh, I know how hard it is to hit. (laughs) I've thrown my last ball. I've swung my last bat. Now content to just watch the action, Jeter seems at ease, if not at peace, with team for which there's little to cheer. Oh, hello. You're 43 years old. Uh, you got many years ahead of you. Thank you. Because when, you, when you're a player, they say you get old at 30. But I've heard it for the you know, last 10 years of my career. You're old, you're old, you're old. And as soon as you retire, all of a sudden you're young again. Is this a job you want to keep forever? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm enjoying what I'm doing. Like I said, there's still a lot to learn. Right? I'm not coming in here claiming to be some so-called expert. There's a lot to learn. And I, I enjoy learning. There's no exit strategy for me here. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can catch the rest of the latest edition of Real Sports all month long on HBO.